Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's faves. And today I want to talk to you about Bach transcriptions, Bach organ transcriptions. Now, every serious record collection and quite a few frivolous and unserious record collections need to have a disc of Bach transcriptions transcriptions of his organ music for the most part. And the reason is really very simple. It's because most people despise the sound of the organ, else outside of a church anyway. And and with good reason, because so many organs sound just horrible. I mean, it's really, it's there's something weird. I, I don't know how else to describe it about playing organ music at home. I mean, you know, the Phantom of the Opera doing Bach Staccata and Fugue in D minor. Yeah, that business. I mean, listening to that when you're like reading a newspaper or sitting on the toilet or, or, you know, whatever you do when you're listening to music, maybe nothing. Maybe you just listen to it. That would be a shocker. You know, seriously, it it sounds to have organ music. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's a tough sell. Let's put it that way. Don't get me wrong, there is glorious organ music, and there are glorious sounding organs, and lots of people loved playing them back in the days of audiophile spectaculars because nothing tests out a stereo system the way a good pipe organ well recorded will. I mean, just the amplitude and sound, and and, and, oh my God, the bass notes. and, And of all of the composers who wrote organ music, the greatest was unquestionably Bach. You know, I did a whole video called My Bach Problem where I talked about how how difficult I find some of Bach's music. I love his organ music. I have no problem with his organ music at all. And I think the reason is because it seems so perfectly suited to what he was doing. I mean, it was it was the instrument to express his kind of grim, relentless, occasionally terrifying, exalted transfiguring metaphysical vision. I mean, nothing does it better than the organ. And so Bach's organ music is, is you know, I, if I listen to the organ, chances are I'm going to listen to Bach because it's just, there's a lot of it and it's just fabulous stuff. And it sounds great on the organ. I don't feel guilty. I don't feel like I'm about to commit human sacrifice or some satanic rite is going on in my basement. I'm not worried about what the neighbors are going to think. It's Bach, and it's great. However, for many, many years, of course, um, before the recordings particularly, the only way to hear Bach's organ music was to go into church and listen to it on an organ. That could be an inconvenience. And so many people created orchestral or piano or other instrument transcriptions of his organ works. And these are fascinating in their own right and perfectly legitimate. And the greatest of those who did it was, of course, Leopold Stokowski. He of the Toccata and Fugue in D minor that we see in the movie Fantasia. That's good old Leopold. And his Bach was special. He was so good at it, and he did so much of it. He was an organist, by the way. So he knew what he was doing in transcribing these pieces. Um, but he became it became a household world. He was a legend only for his Bach transcriptions. And so any serious music listener and, you know, I know you all are, um, really needs to have a a disc of Stokowski's Bach transcriptions, preferably played by Stokowski, but they don't have to be because there are fabulous performances by other people of these transcriptions. He published them. They are available in score. I have a whole pile of them. Um, And, you know, other conductors such as, uh, you know, Jose Cerebriere did wonderful, wonderful recordings for Naxos of all of these Bach transcriptions by Stokowski. He did things other than Bach, of course. This is his phase four Decca stereo Bach transcription disc um, with the Czech Philharmonic, the marvelous Czech Philharmonic. It was a live recording, actually, I believe. Really, really fun stuff. Nobody could do this the way Stokowski did. His orchestrations actually are not are not vulgar. They're not garish in any way. They're based on a, a healthy fund of strings with woodwinds and brass put in as necessary to to imitate or evoke the sounds of the specific organ sonorities, the stops, you know, the, the ranks of pipes that an organist might call on. There's really very little that's ridiculously flamboyant or 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 tasteless about these transcriptions. They're quite sensitively done. In fact, some might find them not colorful enough. 
you could imagine hearing lots of, you know, percussion and craziness going on with him. But Stokowski doesn't do that at all. He's really quite respectful. And you have on this particular disc, this is his Deca, see that, Phase 4? It's in the Phase 4 box, and there are various Stokowski collections and ways to find this. But this disc contains more than just um, the Czech Philharmonic Bach stuff. There are also other transcriptions that he did that were released on other discs originally with other repertoire. So here you got, of course, the Toccata and Fugue in D minor, which you must have, and the Prelude in E flat minor, and Mein Jesu from Schemeli's Songbook, and the Choral Prelude Wir glauben all an einen Gott, known as the Giant Fugue, and a chorale from the Easter Cantata, and finally, the Passacaglia and Fugue in C minor, possibly the grandest of all of Bach's orchestral works. It's an amazing piece of music, a fabulous piece of music. And then you get other things by other people. Uh, a Bird Pavan, the Earl of Salisbury and Galliard, and the Clark Trumpet Voluntary, and Schubert's Moment Musical Number no. 3, and the Chopin Mazurka, and Tchaikovsky's Song Without Words, and Du Parc's song, Extas, ooh, extas, played on the horn, and the Rachmaninoff prelude in C sharp minor, the piano prelude. That's with these are with the London Symphony. So it's a wonderful disc of Stokowski transcriptions, but you really got to get your Bach. Um, it's something that you should have, and then I really do recommend that you get a good disc of Bach organ preludes and fugues, or organ music generally, and, and I will talk about those. I have talked about some already. I've done some videos on them. Um, and, and compare. It's a wonderful thing to do. It really is, because you hear different things in the different media. But one way or another, you know, Bach's organ music has to be heard. It's, it's really the greatest legacy for, you know, what many people regard as the greatest instrument in terms of pure construction and technical ingenuity. So go for it. And keep on listening, my friends. Thank you for joining me. Take care.